Hello friends, I am Chevy. Welcome to my shed. How are you today? How's life in your world? How's things where you are? I hope it's fantastic. It's pretty great here. And I have I have a, a, a I have a topic today. So um, it's it all comes down to this device, this thing that we've all been carrying in our pockets for the last, I don't know, 15 years now. This is literally my childhood dream. And not for the reasons you might think. Uh, obviously, I grew up in a pre-internet era. I grew up in the 80s. Um, we didn't have internet. We had bulletin boards and maybe some other dial-up online services that weren't the internet. But we didn't have internet when I was a kid. Um, we had books and lots of books. And I have an affliction. And I've, I've learned recently that... I might be weird. <laughs> okay, I'm definitely weird. I'm very weird. But my affliction is that I don't, I, I hate not knowing stuff. And so if I have a question or if somebody asks me a question and I don't know the answer, uh, I w will seek that answer out until I know that answer. And when I was a kid, that involved encyclopedias. Uh, my parents had a set of Britannicas from like the 70s or maybe even the 60s. I read those A to Z when I was a kid. I read them all the way through, um, and I would look stuff up constantly. And it was <laughs> it was my dream to have a device that could answer all of my questions because that's been a pursuit of mine since I was tiny. You know, it was I I don't like ha not having an answer if somebody if I, and it, not necessarily like it's not a well, maybe it is an ego thing, but it's not really an ego thing. Like, I can't give you an answer if you ask me. It's more like this burning interior curiosity that's like, I don't know. I need to know. And then I'll go look. And what I've realized is not everybody does this. Um, we all have the ability. It, it's in your pocket. But most people use these for calls or texts or social media. For me, this is an answering machine. This thing will give me the answer that I've been wanting my entire life. This is the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. This device is that thing that can quench those curiosities before they run rampant in my head. And a lot of the time, I think that if I don't know the answer, that 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 sparks a like a thought that just nags at me until I figure it out. And having it here being able to just oh now I know and I can move on with my life it helps me it helps me purge all of that anxiety of not knowing out of my head um and so I guess what I want to know is how often do you look how often do you have a a, a burning question and do you go look it up and <laughs> I guess what I really want to know is, do normal everyday questions that you don't have the answer to bother you? Like, do you do you get bothered by that? Because for me, it's like, if my children ask me a question, you know, they learn something in science or whatever, and I don't know the answer, I, I have to know. Like, well, now I want to know. And when I want to know something, I want to figure it out. And what I've learned is that m most people are much more willing to just be like, I don't know, and move on with their lives. Uh, I'm not willing to do that. I've never been willing to do that, even in a pre-internet age. I had to know the answer. I had to look it up. I had to figure it out because uh, I would go crazy if I didn't. I would just, I don't know. I have to learn, right? And I think part of it comes from, I, I was bored in school. There really wasn't anything to learn. You know, the material that they cover in a school year could be taught in just a couple of weeks, I think. Like, truthfully, I really feel that way. Um, they, you know, maybe a month's worth of actual learning happens. Um, but that because you have it spread out between seven or eight classes and these nine-week periods, it, it, it gets all muddled and it takes much longer than it should to learn something. Um, so I was, you know, I was personally curious because I wasn't getting answers at school. I had to just find those answers for myself. And, you know, we used to live, um, my parents still live in the house. 
we lived like just up from a hospital and then the next hill over was a, a college it's a university now and i could walk over there and go to the library and um i never checked anything out but i could always go over there and just look stuff up if i wanted to and i would i would often do that because um you know, whatever we had in the house, a couple encyclopedias. I said I have encyclopedias, and we had these, like, student handbook things that were, like, a kind of a scam that you bought, um, and I would look stuff up in those. Uh, there, there, wasn't a, you know, there wasn't a wealth of information like there is at my fingertips right now. So, I'm just curious. Do you, do you look up everything, or do you just let it go? If, if you don't know the answer to your question, do you just shrug and move on with your life? Let me know in the comments. That's all I have for you today. Thank you for being here, as always. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, being amazing friends and wonderful people. I really appreciate you, and I'll see you again tomorrow. Today's word you should notice sounds smart is euphemism. It is a noun, meaning a synonym that is less offensive than the word it is used to replace. The doctor told me I'm big boned, and Chuck defensively, that's just a euphemism for fat, his brother said meanly. Euphemism. E-U-P-H-E-M-I-S-M. -E -E never heard of it referred to in something that isn't naughty. I always thought euphemisms were really around, you know, bad words.